So here we are, it's the Sunday after Christmas and we've survived the strangest Christmas probably in living, <coughs> living memory. But we've survived it and we come together again to worship God. And here we are back to doing things online again. So whereas we couldn't sing when we were in the church, we can sing right now. So we're going to start this morning by singing, God rest ye merry gentlemen. Traditionally, this service between um, Christmas and New Year is a service of readings and carols. And I guess in a sense you could say, well, we've read all of these things throughout Advent. But, you know, it's good to take the time to all read them together. So as I read the readings this morning, please join in with me. The first one is from Luke's Gospel, starting at verse 26. The birth of Jesus is announced. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee named Nazareth. He had a message for a young woman promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message, and she wondered what his words meant. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord will make him a king, as his ancestor David was, and he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, I am a virgin. How then can this be? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. Remember your relative, Elizabeth? 
It is said that she cannot have children, but she herself is now six months pregnant, even though she's very old. For there is nothing that God cannot do. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her. This really has been the strangest year ever. And that must have been exactly what Mary said way back in the day. There she was. She had all of her plans all set, all organizing a wedding, thinking that her life was all going to just fall into place. And this happens. This unexpected and difficult to explain pregnancy all kind of happens right there in front of her. This year has been a strange year for mums and young women all over the world. There are many young women who have had children this year and have felt the loss of having family all around them as they normally would have. There are many mums who have found this a very, very frustrating year, having stayed at home with children as we've been in lockdown and heading that way again. And yet, it's interesting how Mary, in all of this anxiety, managed to hang on in and hang on to God. For any girls and boys, children watching this morning, it's been a strange year for you too. You've had six months holiday, yay! But then on top of that, though, you haven't been able to celebrate birthdays the way that you normally would or have your proper holidays the way that normally you would. Even Christmas has been very different this year, and I hope you really enjoyed the day. The funny thing is that Mary, as young as she was, had an awful lot to cope with. And maybe there's something that we can learn in that. Mums didn't get to celebrate Mother's Day this year. In fact, it was very strange because all of the shops kind of cancelled Mother's Day and we ended up here at the church getting loads of flowers that we could go and hand out to the houses round about and invite people to help themselves to. It's amazing how God can get something good to come out of something tough. Remember that Mary found joy. Make sure that as we come to the end of this year, into the next one, that you find joy. We're going to sing about it now. We're going to sing, See Him Lying on a Bed of Straw. See Him Lying on a Bed of Straw I tried to stable with an open door Mary cradle in the babe she bore The Prince of Glory is his name Oh, now carry me to Bethlehem To see the Lord appear to men Just as poor of was the stable then The Prince of Glory when he came Star of silver sweep across the skies Show where Jesus in the manger lies Shepherd swiftly from your stupor rise To see the Savior of the world Oh, now carry me to Bethlehem To see the Lord appear to man Just as poor of was the stable then the Prince of Glory when he came Angels sing again the song you sang Bring God's glory to the heart of man Sing the bed from little baby can Be salvation to the world Oh, now carry me to Bethlehem To see the Lord Appeared to men Just as poor of was the stable then The Prince of Glory when he came The Prince of Glory when he came The Prince of Glory when he came 
So our next reading is from Matthew 1, starting at verse 18. The birth of Jesus. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. His mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, but before they were married, she found out that she was going to have a baby by the Holy Spirit. Joseph was a man who always did what was right, but he didn't want to disgrace Mary publicly. So he made plans to break the engagement privately. While he was thinking about this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary to be your wife, for it is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived. She will have a son, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this happened in order to make what the Lord had said through the prophet come true. A virgin will become pregnant and have a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So when Joseph woke up, he married Mary as the angel of the Lord had told him to do. But he had no sexual relations with her before she gave birth to her son. And Joseph named him Jesus. Amen. It's been hard for dads as well. Father's Day was cancelled this year. Many dads have found themselves at home with the children. Some of them have found themselves losing jobs. And that's been difficult because the usual role of providing and looking after the family has been kind of robbed as well as just a job. And so it's been a very, very tough year this year. In the same way, it was tough for Joseph. He thought that everything was going fine. And he thought that him and his new bride were going to be very much in love. And then he finds out she's pregnant. That would be awful. And yet that passage tells us that Joseph was a man who always did what was right. And in doing what was right, he allows the love of God to flow in him and through him. He does what is right by Mary and God speaks to him and encourages him, take her to be your wife. Can I encourage any fellows that are watching this morning to try and do what's right before God with all of the tough decisions that you have made and are going to make in the future, try and do what is right before God. Because when you do that, you know God's love in your life and you know God's love in your heart and you can share it with all around. So let's talk to the God who loves us right now. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your continued love. We thank you that all the way through this time of Christmas, as strange as it has been, you still love us and you are still near us. Help us to have the faith to hold on to you. Help us when we begin to wobble or feel afraid that we would indeed hold on to you. For you and love us and care for us as no other does. Be with us, Lord, in this short time that we're together today. We ask in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So on to another reading. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. The shepherds and the angels. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I'm here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord, and this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angels, singing praises to God, glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. 
When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angel had told them. Amen. The shepherds in the story were worried. They lived in difficult times. There was a bit of unrest because they had a, another force occupying their land. And it wasn't easy for them. It's not easy for those who look after the land now either. It's not easy for shepherds, for farmers. It's not easy for fishermen. It's not easy for those with businesses because we're heading towards something called Brexit and all of the uncertainty that brings. In amongst all of that real broken world that the shepherds lived in, God broke in and he brought them hope. He reminded them that his kingdom is different and it's in his kingdom through his son that we have hope for now and forever. And in these troubled times, we need to hold on to the Lord Jesus Christ for our hope. That, that is where we will find the strength to continue from today into tomorrow and on and into the future. We have one more reading, and I'm going to read that just now. It's Matthew chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 1. And it says these words. Visitors from the east. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterwards, some men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the baby born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it came up in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was very upset, and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, where will the Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judea, they answered. For this is what the prophet wrote, Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means the least of the leading cities of Judah, for from you will come a leader who will guide my people Israel. So Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret meeting and found out from them the exact time the star appeared. When he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions, go and make a careful search for the child, and when you find him, let me know, so that I too may go and worship him. And so they left. And on their way, they saw the same star they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were. What joy was theirs. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house, and when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and presented them to him. Amen. This strange time that the kings, we call them the kings of the wise men, lived in. It was a strange time where they saw signs, a sign that would give them hope. They'd been watching the sky. It led them to a, a, a different place, a foreign place, with different customs. I'm not going to talk too much about the three wise men today. That's for another week. But isn't it interesting that in the first wave of coronavirus, we realized just that the coronavirus didn't discriminate. It didn't bother about status or age. It didn't discriminate. In fact, Prince Charles caught coronavirus in the first wave, and he too was laid up until he recovered. The Lord Jesus Christ doesn't discriminate, but he's not like a virus. 
A virus drains our strength from us. A virus makes us ill. A virus traps us inside. And it uses us as a host so that it survives. The Lord Jesus Christ doesn't come like the virus. The Lord Jesus Christ comes to make our lives better. Comes to give us that love, that hope, that joy, that peace. The Lord Jesus Christ can give us a peace that we can't even begin to imagine. So it's important that just like the wise men who are wise enough to seek, to seek him, that we seek him too. And we do that just now as we come around the Lord's table. Part of our Christmas tradition is we come around a table. It makes us feel that we belong. We're part of a family who we love. And it's only appropriate. Here we are just two days after Christmas Day, at the very end of the year, that we come around a table. It says that we belong. We belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's talk to God right now. Let us pray. Loving Father, we bow before you now as your family. Each and every one of us called to belong and to belong to you. Lord, we acknowledge as we come at the end of this very, very difficult year that we are not perfect. We also know that you love us as we are. Help us to allow you to transform us into the people that you would have us be. Showing your love, your compassion, building your kingdom right here where we live. Lord, we come to your table to share in a celebration of your love. We're grateful to be counted as your sons and daughters. Help us to be ready and willing to tell of how you died and rose again so that we can live our lives close to you. We ask that you would join us today, taking your rightful place at the head of this table and the head of this church. Father, please send your Holy Spirit to move in power upon these elements and among our people, touching us each and every one wherever we are right now, that we may know that we're in the presence of the Most High God. Lord, we ask you to accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we come and offer ourselves, help us to put aside any differences, all of the trials and tribulations, that as we focus on you right now, everything else will fade away. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took the bread and having given thanks to God, as we just have, he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in memory of me. And in the same way, he took the cup saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed with my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. And as the invitation was to the disciples in the upper room that night, so it is to us, right where we are, right where we sit, right now, at the end of the year 2020. So take and eat, for this is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ that is broken for you. And this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Drink, all of you. Do this and remember Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, a gift of love that has given us hope, peace, and forgiveness. Send your Holy Spirit to be with us at all times, that we may stand strong and firm as your family, that we may stand strong and firm as your church, that we may serve you better and love you more. And as we come to the end of this year, 
May we know your peace in our hearts and your hope in our lives now and forever. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we come to the close just now, can I just take the opportunity to wish you a very, very happy new year. It's got to be better than 2020. It just has to be. And can I ask you to join me by belting out one more carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. So now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen.